Hi, I'm Marius from MWS Photography, and welcome to the first episode of Digital Photography Today, the weekly show where you will learn how to become the master of your camera. Now, this is episode one, so we are going to start right at the beginning. We are going to look at the difference between auto and program, and I'm going to show you that program, that P on your camera, I'm going to show you where it is, that that is the better auto. And then we're going to look at some inspirational thinking. But in the following weeks, we are going to learn what shutter is, aperture, ISO, white balance, bracketing, um, exposure compensation, flashes, editing, etc., etc. We're going to look at some products and we're going to really improve your photography week after week. So this is episode one. So let's kick it off and let's look at the difference between auto and then program. Now the camera I'll be using is the Canon PowerShot SX50HS. Now this is called a bridge camera. And why it's called a bridge camera, you've also got this, which is your little point and shoot cameras. Um, as long as it's got this dial on top where you can choose your exposures and stuff, then this little point and shoot camera can actually take very nice pictures. It must just not have an on and off and a shoot button and that's it. Because then it's like the same as using your cell phone to take pictures. You want to have some control. So this is your point and shoot. And then you've got your larger SLR cameras like this. So the bridge camera fits nicely in between. It bridges the gap between your smaller camera and your larger SLR camera. Okay, so on your camera, if you look, you'll see this dial right here. This is called your exposure dial. And here you can choose from auto to program to shutter priority, aperture priority, manual, and all the other settings you've got on there. You can choose the mode you want to shoot in. Now green, if you look here, you've got your auto, your full on auto mode. Now in this mode, the camera does everything for you. It's basically pointless to shoot in this mode because you won't really learn anything about photography. You're turning on the camera, you're taking a picture, and that's it. You don't have an idea what the camera is doing. The camera is deciding all your settings for you, your exposure, your white balance, eyes, are all those that will be explained in the following weeks. But the camera is deciding everything for you. It's focusing for you. It's deciding must it use flash or not. It's doing everything. But if you look just above that, you're going to see a P. Now that P stands for program. And this is the much better auto because you are in control of what you are doing. Now, if you look at the, the, the negative sides of using auto, when you are in auto on this camera, I can open up the flash, but it doesn't mean the flash is going to fire. The camera is still going to decide if it wants to use the flash or not. If you use an SLR camera like this, you'll see in the auto mode, you can't open the flash by using the button next to the side. You'll, you have to go to program to open the flash. In auto, it just stays down until it decides it wants to come up and it basically wants to pop up and, and use the flash. But what if you don't want to use the flash? It's still gonna pop up and be in your way. So you can't use the flash when you want to use it in the auto mode. You cannot set your white balance, your ISO, and there's other settings as well as the exposure compensation and all those type of stuff. You can't really set that. The camera decides it for you. Now you might think as a beginner, this is a good thing, but the sooner you learn what those settings are, the sooner you can start to take awesome pictures because you can decide the way you want the picture to look. You have some input to the final image you're going to take. Very important as well is your focusing. If the camera decides the focusing for you, you might have a person standing here and some distracting stuff in the background. Now you want to focus on the person. The camera decides to focus on the stuff in the background. Now you've got an out of focus person, but you've got a background which is in focus. That's not right. You've just, that photo is spoiled because the camera chose everything for you. The moment you go to program the P on the camera, you can obviously now choose your focus points. You can say, right, I want the camera to focus exactly there. And the camera will only focus there. Now in the program mode, the camera does the same as in auto. It still works out your lighting for you. It looks at, your, at, the, at the lighting in the scene that you want to take the picture of, and it will still do your shutter and aperture and stuff like that for you, the same as in auto, but it gives you more control. So if you look at program, like I said, you can pop the flash and you can fire the flash when you want to. You can decide where you want to focus. You can change your white balance. You can change your ISO. You can change exposure compensation. You can even, if you want to, on most cameras, you can even tell the camera, well, I don't like the settings you gave me. I'm just going to change it a little. And you can, you can ask the camera for different um, settings, if you want to call it. You can change maybe that the shutter and aperture combinations are completely different. So let's have a closer look at 
this camera, the SX50. Now, very important, when you've got a different camera than what I'm using, I cannot look at all the cameras in the market, there's too many of them. It's just a, point, it's just a matter of the buttons are in different locations. So keep your manual handy so you can see where the buttons are on your camera. It's all going to be the same. If I'm talking about a function on the camera, your camera will most probably have it. It's just maybe in a different, uh, a different button location on, on the body, or it might even be in the camera's menu system. So keep your manual handy and just look where it is on your camera if you're using a different camera. So let's have a closer look at the auto and where it fails. Okay, now that we've got a closer look at the camera, you'll notice at the top, it says auto. And there we've also got at the top of the camera, we've got the camera set to auto. Now the camera will now do everything for us. So let's look at, for instance, when we want to use the flash. So if I go to the top of the camera and I lift the pop-up flash at the top of the camera, you'll see it's got a little sign that says flash auto. Now it's got a little button here as well, a little white flash button. If I press that, you'll see it says auto flash automatically fires as needed. So that's when the camera thinks it needs to, to use the flash. What if I go outside and I want to use the flash in the middle of the daylight? The camera is just going to say, oh, here's enough light. I'm not going to fire. So you've just lost your shot. But if you go to program, so if I go here at the top and I change it to program, you'll see it shows you there program. You'll notice I've got just a flash symbol there. So when you press the flash button, you'll see it's got three icons at the top. I can now choose between the first one, which is flash auto, the same as in the automatic mode, or the second one, which just says flash on. Now, this is the best one to be in. The third one that says, um, if I go to that one, slow synchro, that's for doing creative effects. As you can see, see slow shutter speed, it says there. I like it actually when a camera shows the stuff, it makes it easier for someone who's learning. Slow shutter speeds to, to brighten background. So you can do some very creative stuff of that mode. But you're most of the time going to be in the one in the middle on this specific camera. So it says flash always fires. Now that makes sense. So if I'm going to go outside and I want to use my flash, I just lift the, the pop-up flash and I can use it. If I don't want to have the flash, I just drop the pop-up and then you'll see the icon shows you there, no flash. So already in the program mode, you are in control of the way you want to use your flash. Let's look at the focusing. If I go here to auto, you'll see it doesn't have any block or something in the middle that I can choose where the focus point is, which is very nice on your SLR cameras. You've got a lot of focus points you can use. This camera has also got one that I can control, but not in the auto mode. Now here is a little button you can press. You'll notice on your SLR cameras, the button is usually here for your Canon camera. Um, below the record on this camera, you've got a little button there that you can press. On your Nikon camera, it's a, it's a little um, or, or a wheel here, or not actually a wheel, uh, directional button. That's the one I use on my Nikon SLR. It's the same camera I'm using to record this video now with. So on this camera, if you press this button now, it's just going to tell you face select on. If you press it again, you'll notice it just dump, jumps around between face select on and face select off. That's the only thing you can do. So now the camera is limiting you from choosing where you want to focus. But when I go to program, you'll see when I press this button, it's got a little block there. So I can move this block around by just using this directional section of this wheel on the camera right here. There's this thing I can press. I'm actually blocking the video light so you can't see where I'm moving it now. But if I'm pressing down, you'll see the block goes down. If I'm pressing up, the block goes up. So say so I had someone right here in the image and I want to take a picture of that person. I can move the block to that section and then when I focus, when I press the focusing right here on the camera, I can say, camera, please focus there. Make sure that section is in focus and then blur the background or do whatever you want to specifically do with the image. So those are two things which I find very important and you can do that in program. Now in program, you can also, like I said, you can change your ISO. There's the eyes on this camera. So if I press that, you'll see it opens up. I can change the ISO. If you're in the auto function and you press the ISO, now, as I will explain in a later episode, if you press it here, it's just not doing anything. The camera is limiting you from using it. There's also the white balance that you can change, for instance, in program. If you go to functions, just to show you how much this camera will block, uh, or, or, or not actually block, but limit you that you can't change. If you're in program and you press this function button right here, 
you're going to see a, a list of all the functions you can change right here. Lots of stuff you can change. If I'm going down, you'll see there's a bunch of options I can change. If you go to auto and you press the function button, you'll notice there's almost nothing you can change. It's, t it's taken away all the settings that you could have used. It's limiting you from using it. So now I'm sure you'll agree with me that program is the much better auto. In this mode, you will learn how to use your camera a lot better than in the auto mode where the camera is doing everything for you. I hope you have learned a lot by this closer look at the program function that you now know it's the better auto because you can now choose the flash when you want to use it. You can choose where you want to focus, when you want to focus. You can change other settings as well. When I showed you in the function where just all those settings and those in those menus just came popping up. So while you're still in an automatic environment, the camera is now allow allowing you to do so much more. And this will help kickstart your photography. The moment you start to be able to do to, to be able to change settings on the camera, you are learning every picture you are taking. And that's also the reason that I want to talk about in the second part of this episode, our premiere episode. I want to talk about photography. I want to inspire you a little by showing you the first camera I bought, a digital bridge camera, and what I achieved when I set my mind to it. And I wasn't forced into thinking that if you don't have good gear, you can't have good pictures. It's the guy behind the camera. It's you who are using your camera who are creating awesome pictures, not the camera. So if you've got the money to buy good gear, trust me, it helps. I'm using SLR cameras, pocket wizards, studio lights, everything in my daily work, and it looks awesome but it can still be done with a basic camera. So here comes the inspiring part. So I'm gonna share with you some pictures I took and the camera I was using is the PowerShot S3IS. Now I bought this in 2006 and then I started attending photography clubs or photographic societies. And in 2007, I just decided I'm not gonna sit back while the people who've got the full frame SLR cameras and got thousands of dollars of gear take, oh, I don't know if that's the word, the limelight, basically they're in front of the big gear and I'm sitting back and feeling sorry for myself. So I went out and I, most of the competition nights, people said, wow, I love this image. And I was just, I've got, I've got a bridge camera and people couldn't believe that I got such good pictures from using a very small camera. So in 2007, I went full out and I was attending three photography clubs. When the end, I, I won photographer of the year Photograph of the Year, Prince of the Year, Digital of the Year, at almost all three of the clubs, I won most of the awards by using uh, this PowerShot S3IS. And later in the year, I bought a 350D, which is my first SLR Canon 350D. And yeah, if you set your mind to it, you can do some amazing photography. It's not the camera, it's the guy behind it. So the sooner you realize that, the sooner you can start a very creative and fun photographic journey by learning how to use what you've got now and then later on the good gear will come trust me your pocket wizards and studio lights and macro lenses and zoom lenses they will come in the end but you must learn to use what you've got now so the first picture I want to show you is a portrait I took and this I just zoomed in on this camera but it only has a 12 times optical back then and I created this close cropped image which has got so much emotion and then I went into Photoshop and I made it black and white and I dodged and burned a little and gave the image very nice contrast but it was done with a very small bridge camera and this image I entered into a, a photographic salon I can't remember which one it was but under the photography uh, uh, under this the the portraiture um, basically category it won first prize so I was very <laughs> surprised when that happened now the next image I call gothic effect and this camera doesn't have a way of attaching a flash if you look at the top it, it's only got a pop-up flash so I didn't have any triggers or studio lights to take my picture with but you, if you look at the at this image you'll notice the light is coming from the side um, and what I used to do this was I, I bought umbrellas I didn't even have photographic umbrellas. So I went out and I went to a, a clothing store and I saw a, a nice reflective umbrellas that was silver on the inside. And I used those and I bought small film flashes, 
with optical slaves that I put at the bottom. So what happened was when I took the image with my camera, when this flash went off, when I used the pop-up, and I use it in full manual, so when I use the pop-up flash, when that flash went off, it triggered the other film flashes that was reflecting on homemade light stands, and this, this is the image I got from the most basic, basic gear. Um, the next image, this was just a shot that I took um, while going to um, it's a place called Boerkop in Cape Town. And then um, I just did a nice close crop of this image. And the colors, everything was so vibrant. I just walked around and looked for the most striking place I could find and I got my shot right there all on a basic camera. Now these cameras have got very nice macro features as well. So if you look at the next two images, you'll see that um, the first one, this leaf, I just, ba I'm basically on top of that leaf with the camera. I'll show in a later episode how the macro function of this camera works. But I focus closely on that leaf and then I used in this image, I use rule of thirds to put the, f the, the leaf on the best spot or the best position in the image to make the composition as strong as possible. The next one was a dead flower. I don't know what flower it is. I'm not the gardeny type, so I don't know all about flowers and stuff. So I went on this dead flower and I put the lens. Basically, the front of the lens element touches the flower and I'm on top of it and I got this striking image that I converted to black and white and it just looks awesome. Um, the next image again was where I used flashes on the camera that actually shouldn't have supported the flash. So I could have used the pop-up flash on the camera, but what would have happened is I would have just flattened that entire image. The lighting would have been just terrible because the light would have come from the front. Well, on this image, the one light comes from the side. That's why there's a shadow um, against the wall. And then and there's another light at the bottom highlighting the section in the, in the foreground with the knife and the stuff that's put there. And this image is called Seeking Inspiration. So I had this idea for what I wanted to achieve with this um, subject, with the, the, the person who posed for me for the shot. And then I used these small film flashes to light the image. I want to have the image lit, if that's the word I'm looking for. And how I got the lighting is the same as with that gothic effect image. I had to, when the, the pop-up flash fired, it triggered the other flashes. There's a method I used there as well. Otherwise, when your flash goes off, it's just going to spoil your image again. So I basically held my hand in front of the pop-up flash. So it fires into my hand, but it's not strong enough to, um, for the light to, I can't think of the word I want to for now, but it's not bright enough that the subject will, will, be destroyed by that light coming from the front. So the light was coming from the sides and from the bottom. The light that was firing into my hand was just to let these flashes go off. And then I think there's one more image here. The last one again is a flower and I was hanging, uh, it was, I, was, I almost fell in the water with the camera. I was hanging on a tree and in macro mode I was just hanging down there pointing it on top of the flower and then I got this. So this is just a few of my pictures I took with this PowerShot S3 IS. And it's not, like I said, not the camera. You must now start. That's why I'm talking in this episode, I started the program, the Better Auto. From today, you must make that decision that you are gonna take awesome pictures with the camera you've got. Not by looking at the gear you need to take good pictures. Take what you've got, learn the camera, learn to use shutter, aperture, manual, Use your white balance, your ISO settings. Learn how to use a flash. On the SX50, you can put a flash on top, and I will show you how that works as well. Use external material like reflectors, and go uh, take pictures at the right time of the day. All subjects that we are gonna talk about in future episodes, and it also brings me to a, a, um, uh, something I wanna add. If you've got any questions, now I can't answer all the questions due to workload, so, if you've got any question about your camera that you would like to have answered uh, in a future episode, just send that question to askmwest at mwest.co.za. And if we have time to answer it in a future episode, we will. So that's that for this episode. And in the next episode, we are going to look at the importance of correctly focusing. And we're going to use the SX50 as well as an SLR camera to explain the reason why you need to properly focus on a subject. So that's that for this episode, and I'll see you next week. Bye.